Okay, so today's topic is on continuous functions. And continuous function in topological spaces are fundamental objects in mathematics. And for those who study calculus, you should agree with this, right? Okay, so let's just look at the definition first, the topological definition of continuous function. So given two topological spaces and a function from x to y that is continuous, if we have for any v open in y, the inverse image is open in x under f. Okay, so we call this if f is continuous. And uh, if the topology is generated by a basis, then to show f is continuous, it suffices to show that the inverse image under every basis element is open. Let's just verify this. Because for v is open, v is just a union of basis element. And by the property of inverse image, so if each basis element is open, then union of sets is open. Again, if the topology is generated by subbasis, then to show the continuity of the function, which is show that each subbasis under inverse image each subbasis is open. Well, because um, given any basis, the inverse image under a basis, well, each basis is a finite intersection of subbasis element, and again, by the property of subbasis, we can we have this, right? So, the inverse image under basis is a finite intersection of open sets, which is again open, and by this part, right, we show that f is continuous because we show that oh, under basis is open, right? And from here, we know that if we show basis open, then f is continuous. So, if we show that Subbase is open. Subbase open implies basis is open, right? Under basis is open. Under basis is open implies the function is continuous. So here's a remark that you might care about the most for those who study calculus is that this definition of continuous is the equivalent to the epsilon delta definition of continuous function. Okay? So here I will just show you guys this. Now verify. We equip R, R with the standard topology. So the bases are all elements in terms of A, B. Okay, so we equip R with the standard topology. Now, furthermore, like in the after, we're gonna equip with metric topology, but metric topology and standard topology are equivalent topology. Like the, the topology they generated are the same. Right? Metric, metric, and standard. So equip R with a standard topology. So suppose it is continuous, right? We want to show the epsilon delta thing. So for any epsilon greater than zero, this set is an open interval, which is open in R. So the inverse image is again open in R and it contains X naught. If it's open and it contains X naught and the topology is generated by the basis, which means that there exists a basis element containing X and uh, and and uh, a b is right now a b is contained in right this and because x not is an a b so we can pick in delta such that right uh we uh like right x minus and x plus delta is in a b i think this should be obvious right and so if x and x naught, the distance is less than delta, right? Absolute value less than delta implies that x is in here, which means that it's in a, b. If it's in a, b, which is in this, which is that x, fx is in v. But v is equal to this, right? Which means that this, right? So for any epsilon delta, for any epsilon greater than zero, there exists delta such that here we have this. So epsilon delta definition. Now for the reverse direction, suppose that f is continuous on R, and for v open to R, right, we want to show that this set is open. So we pick a point in it, right, we pick a point in it, then we know that fx is in v, right, fx is in v, um, V is open, so we exist a basis element such that it contains 
the element fx, right? So we pick a vx such that we, we scale or we, we expand this a bit, such as still containing ax, bx, containing v. So vx and v. Now, from here, by epsilon delta, we can pick a ux such that this is contained in the inverse image of f, inverse image of vx, right? This by epsilon delta, right? This is our epsilon, right? Our epsilon. So there is this delta such that all of this is in the inverse image of here, right? This is by the continuity definition in epsilon delta. And this is subset of V, so it's continuing to be. So this means that for any X in here, there exists a basis element, right? U is a basis element that contains X and contains an inverse image of under V, which by definition that inverse image of under V is open because the topology is generated by a basis. And the open sets Right, we we talk about this in the first lecture. Right, um, forgot we just go back. Right, um, general basis, set is open if it only if. If we're in the open set, then exists basic elements such as this. Right, this is the topology generated by B. Right, and we here we could talk generated by the, standard topology is generated by the all the open intervals. Right. So for x and here, we can we have an open interval that contains x and uh, contain and this. So this open. All right. So <laughs> yeah. So we see that okay. This definition of continuity agrees with our depth of delta definition of continuous functions, right? Okay. Now we're gonna look at some characterization equivalent condition of a function being continuous. So the following are equivalent first is that f is continuous, and for any a and x, f a bar is in f a bar, and the inverse image on the closed set is closed. And the fourth is that for any x and for any neighborhood v of f x exists neighborhood of u x such that u is in v. Right, this is like the F, this is similar to the epsilon delta thing, right? So let's prove the following are all equivalent. So we, first we show that one implies two. For one implies two, right? We just want to show that um, here implies here, which means that x is an a bar implies f x is an f a bar, right? Yes. So for any, so we want to show that this, this is true. So for any V neighborhood of FX, we have this is neighborhood of X. If this is neighborhood of X as in an A bar, which means that this neighborhood intersect A gives an, gives an element Y, right? It's not empty. So for this Y, we see that FY Fy is in V and also in Fa, right? So V, V and Fa gives a non-empty intersection for any V, which means the Fx is in Fa bar. So 1 to 2 is done. Now we're going to show 2 to 3. So for A, in, uh, let A be the inverse image under the closed set. We want to show that A is closed. Right, but we have we have we have this um, true. Right, this is true. So, which means that if x is an a bar, if x is an a bar, f x is an f a bar, which is contained in f a bar. Right, we assume this is true. Right, f a bar and f a bar. This is contained in B bar, but B is closed, B bar is in B. So um, Fx is in B, which means that X is in F inverse image under B, which is equal to A. So 
then this implies x and this. So a bar is a subset of a, so a is closed. Okay, and now we're gonna show that three implies one. To show three implies one, it's just by, really just by the Morgan's law. Okay, but not, not, sorry, not the Morgan's law, it's just by the property of inverse image. Okay, and uh, to show one and four equivalent, um, one implies four is that, okay, for V neighborhood of fx, this is a neighborhood of x, right? This is our u, and we have this uh, always holds, right? So for any neighborhood of fx, there exists a u neighborhood of x such that f of u is contained in V. And to see four implies one is that we could just work with every single point, right? So for V open and Y, we want to show that F inverse V is open. So we pick X contained in this. So FX is in V. FX is in V, so it exists U X neighborhood such that F of U X in V, or we say that um, U X is contained in, so we just uh, write F of U X is in V, so which means that U X is uh, contained in the inverse image of V, right? So, we take the union of all x in here, right? And this should be equal to this. And as needed, is a union of open sets, right? U x is open. U x is, each u x is contained in this. So we take the union, it is also in this, but this is in here because for each point, right? Each point. So this is the thing we've been working with. And yeah. So an important class of continuous function is called homeomorphisms. Given two topological spaces in a function such as is a bijection, if the function in its inverse a function is both continuous, then we call this function a homeomorphism. So let's elaborate more on what I mean by the inverse to be continuous. The inverse to be continuous means that for u open in x, this set, right, this set, which is precisely equal to f u, which is open in y. So why does equal, I've showed here, I already showed here, right? So, which means that f is a homeomorphism, means that it gives a correspondence between open sets in x and y, right? It takes open sets to open sets. And it take back open sets, it take, and also take inverse of open sets to open sets, right? So it gives a correspondence between uh, x open sets and x and y. And if f is just uh, injective and continuous, we let z be the image and we give it a subspace topology inherited by y. Then if the restricted function is a homeomorphism, then we say that f is an embedding of x and y, or topological embedding, okay? So some examples of homeomorphisms. So for the function such that fx is equal to x over one minus x squared, we have the inverse, we have the inverse is equal to this. And both f and f negative one is continuous. So negative one, one is homeomorphic with r. Okay, so we've been talking about what functions are homeomorphisms, but we need actual examples of continuous functions and topological spaces. We need to add some starting points, right? We, we talked about what is to, uh, continuous functions, but we actually need examples of continuous function and topological spaces. I mean, this doesn't count, right? Because this is too specific, right? So here's a long very long page of statements so we're gonna go through one by one so given x y z three topological spaces and if function is a constant map then it's continuous okay and the inclusion map is continuous also the composition of continuous function is continuous and uh, the restricted function is also continuous given the subspace right the restricted function is continuous and uh, Given a continuous, so given a continuous function, the restriction is also continuous. Okay, 
Now, so given the continuous function, we let z be a subspace of y such that it contains the inverse, the image of it. Then this function restricting image function is again continuous, right? Subspace. And also f x y continuous y is a given let z such that y is a subspace of our z then such that f x is contained and actually we don't even need this we don't even need this right so the function h that expanding the range is again continuous okay and uh, function f given a function if x is a union of open sets right uh, open we should we have to say that it is open open sets so it's a union of open sets such that x is a union open set such that f restrict on every um, open set is continuous, then f is a continuous function. Okay, so we look through all of those things, so we're going to use them in the future. That's pretty important. So constant function is continuous. Why? Because for v open and y, the inverse images are either the entire entire space or empty set, so the open set. And for part b, inclusion map is continuous why because for u open in x i negative one on u is u intersect a right right and which is open in a because u is open in x right. we have this this equality holds right because if, um, I mean, this equality is easy to see. And for part C is that composition of continuous function is continuous function. Well, because U is open in Z, so G, we take the inverse image on G is open in Y. For this open in Y, we take the inverse image under F, which is open in X. But we have this equality, right? So for u open in z, g of f is open in x. So g of f is continuous. Okay? Okay, so a, b, c, d is that, which is hard. We've done a, b, c. And d is that the restricted math is continuous given that the original function is continuous. Okay, so for this is really just the composition of the f and the inclusion map right f of a equals to i of f of i right f of i and the composition of continuous function is continuous so we're done part b is uh, part d is done part e so which f is continuous, we give a subspace such that it contains the image, then the restricting range function is again continuous. So for g x to z, b is open to z, right? So if b is open to z, then b is to z is a u for some u open in y. So the inverse image of g uh, g negative one b is this but g is just equal to f right the codomain is different but the function value output it are they're all the same so um and also yeah this is my point is that you could just swap g to f because g and f they g is just equal to f instead our codomain is different and we give the codomain different topologies 
but the set of topologies, their output are all the same, right? We're just talking about output here, right? The input output, the, the graph, right? They're all the same. Thus, we can say that we can just swap G to F. And F inverse under G, under Z, I'm sorry, under Z, we know that um, Z, Z contains Fx. Right, so this gives you, should give you X and this, and gives you this. But F is continuous, U is open in Y, F inverse U is open in X. So for B open in Z, G negative one B open in open in X. So G is continuous. Okay, now part E is done. Part A B C D E F. Part F is expanding range. It's again continuous. Well, you might guess expanding range is really just inclusion again, right? Composition of x, x to y, and i from y to z, right? So f is again done. And the last thing here, right? Um, for v open in y, f inverse v intersect with u is precisely this, and which is open in x. So, so f inverse v is really just all the alphas, union of all the alphas, right? Union of all the alphas, which is open in x. So we're done. Okay. And the lemma is about is called passing lemma. Um. So we can pass two continuous function to give you another continuous function. So here's the statement. If you're a union of closed sets, and each each set we define a continuous function, and they agree on the intersection, then if we pass them together, it gives you a new continuous function such that a equal to f on a equal to g on b. And the proof is really really easy because for c close and y, h inverse and c, which is this, right. Just verify this equality, and uh, f inverse c is closed in a, right? Because f is continuous, but a is closed in x, right? So this is closed in x. Again, this is also closed in x. So their union is also closed in x. So we're done. And uh, so if a function from a, from a uh, space to a product space, so we have components, then f is continuous if only if each component is continuous, okay? So pi one from x, y to x is a projection map. We define a projection map. And the inverse image under every open set is just u, uh, times y, but which is again open, right? Open in the product topology. So, so we have the projection map. The projection map is a continuous map. So f one is really just pi one of f. So f one is continuous. Similarly, f two is also continuous, right? So we show this to show that the reverse direction. Well, if f one f two are continuous, then. Um, for A and here, right, for A in this set, F only if F A is in U times V. F A in U times V, if only if F A in U, if 1 A in U, F 2 A in V. Right. Uh, a is in this and A is also in this, which means that this set is precisely equal to those sets, but those both of them are open in A because they are continuous. So as desired. Okay, so here we finished our topic for continuous function, and next time we're gonna focus on something that is a bit harder. Nice, right, so get ready and see you guys.